Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Horn Camp Connect, live from KBHC 2022. It's an offering of Cormont Music, as you all are aware. I'm your moderator and KBHC staff member, Elizabeth Simmons. Today's session of Horn Camp Connect will be led by Bernard Scully, and will feature James Nagus. Uh, as, as always, always before we jump, jump into the session, session, just a couple of Zoom housekeeping items. In just a second. So that everyone's able to hear the presentation, we've muted all participants. Please stay muted for the duration of this session unless one of our presenters asks you to unmute. If you click on participants at the bottom of the screen, you should see a participant list pop up with your name at the top. If the name associated with your Zoom account is different from your own name, please click on the blue more button next to your name, select rename, and enter your name. If you'd like to include your pronouns with your name, please do. If you click on chat at the bottom of the screen, you should see the chat box appear. You're all very aware of this. Comments posted in the chat are affected by the drop down menu above the text box. Depending on your selection, your comments may be viewed by everyone or by individual participants. Just double check that you have your intended audience selected every time that you write a comment in the chat. With that, I'll hand things off to Bernard. Morning, everybody. Uh, it is day six here in KBHC. Thanks, Elizabeth. Good to see you again this morning. Yeah, me too. Good to see you, James. <laughs> Can't wait. It's day six. It's our final day of week two, which means it is our final, final day. And we have one more warm up. Uh, this one's going to push us pretty hard. So uh, great to see everybody sticking with us and let's get started. <coughs> Doing our usual stretching. I definitely need this now after teaching for about 40 hours so far this week. So. <laughs> but I love it. Here we go. End twist. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, now we're going to do a fold over, touch your toes as far as you're able to go. Ten counts. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right now we're gonna do the side stretches. <clears throat> so I'm gonna grab my right hand with my left and use it to a little better stretch. Ten counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then the other side. <clears throat> Right hand, or grab your left hand with the right. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <clears throat> now we do arm rotation to get our lactic acid out from up here. Here we go. <clears throat> Backwards first. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now forwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And lastly, our shoulder shrugs. Let's give ourselves a nice neck massage <clears throat> here. Backwards first. There you go. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and now forwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <clears throat> All right, now we do our breathing. We're just sort of building on what we've done. Get your metronome on to sixty. In for three, out for 15, 218, 121, then one for as long as you can. We'll do our capacity breathing, and finally our hot breaths. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Good. At one twenty one. One, two, ready, go. Good. <clears throat> now we're just going to take in one breath and see how far we can go. Relax. <clears throat> Oh, if you're still going, go ahead. I have to stop. <clears throat> All right. That leads us to the capacity breathing. So we're going to do this one breath and top it off a little more out with the hissing. One, two, ready, go. all out. <clears throat> and lastly, go for the biggest inhalation and see if we get all of it out. One, two, three, go. Every last thing. Okay, <clears throat> and now we're going to do our pop breaths. Again, as we put our fist up against our mouth and we breathe in, in suction, and then we release until all the air rushes in. Do three of these. One, two, ready, go. Biggest suction of air yet. For our first notes on the horn. <clears throat> I've survived the pollen this week, but it's not really easy. <clears throat> All right, so we're just going to do a little standing free buzz here wherever it's easiest. Some nice warm air 
into the horn first before a sound comes out. Just get that sensation. Don't want to move too fast right away. speed up a little more to see if the sound comes out. Wherever notes leave you, go with it. this by doing our hodo do exercise. <clears throat> Stand me up horn if you like. Okay. One, two, three. Song to sing. Breathe 
feel connected musically. Let's buzz it on the mouthpiece. Really sustain. <clears throat> So now we're going to put all of the sirens that we've been doing all week into one. Don't worry if you can't do it all yet. Um, you will over time. So it's going to be a three octave slur. Um, it's going to be very slow. Um, you might go down, slur down to it. Just see how low you can start. And then I would say start there. <clears throat> I'm going to start in the low C. We'll do this, you know, maybe two times or so. So the important thing is take a big breath and go as slow as you can. Sounds something like this. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're here. All right, let's all try it. If you were all together, it would sound like a bunch of animals. Here we go. You can keep developing your buzz as about as high as I can play, but you can play lower. Um, I, I find I can play an octave lower than I can play in the horn. I don't know why that's the case on a mouthpiece. Maybe it has something to do with physics, <coughs> I'm sure. started to kind of work myself down there, uh, my low range became much easier. So if you're struggling with your low range, I'd say mouthpiece blank is uh, a really good way to help facilitate it. Same with high range, of course. Okay, <clears throat> so now we're going to do harmonic series, and we're just going to start on the, uh, you know, the second partial here. No, sorry, third partial. Our third partial. And we were on the sixth partial the other day. We'll stick it at 60. So we're used to this now, so maybe we can start in one, two, and three. Like James always recommends starting in one and three. Uh, one, two, and three is challenging, but we'll try it. Why not? There we are. All right, let's do it. One, two, all right. Here. 
you know, it's a lot to add on. So we're going to add the final trill flourish. And at this point, you're going to have to use the uh, jaw bit to make this flourish. It won't work, the jaw won't work at all at the early stages of the building, but at the final stage, I have to do a little bit of like a yeah, everybody try that. Yeah. Yeah. That has to work along with the air and the face. <coughs> so um, I'll start on the 16th notes and see how this sounds. Hope that I can do this this early in the morning. There we go. There's the uh, starting at 16th notes with the subdivisions.
Okay, now we're getting to the upper regions of the horn. <clears throat> Just try to see it. Mine sometimes is not spectacular the first time I do it. Still, we'll see how it goes. It's good to use all the B, the B flat and F fingerings. I think we know them now, so let's just do it to your leisure. Whatever fingerings you prefer. We're going to build the chromatic scale in three octaves on 16th notes. So we're going to do each octave. So the first one would just be uh, C to C. Thank you. 
built that really, really well. Use the articulation you like. Parse it up into different, you know, sections. Um, just dramatic scale. Keep it up with the different fingerings. Good for you. I think we're making record time here. So now we're going to do our two octave arpeggios. Sorry, two octave scales and arpeggios. So we're adding sixteenth notes and then triple arpeggios. We go right into. We're pulling all the stops out. Um, <clears throat> I blame myself for writing this for myself. So sorry about that. Sorry about yourself. This is gonna be hard. But don't worry, just try it out. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> pretend like they're in a piece of music. I don't just play them outside. You know, James, you can talk about all sorts of things you can do with scales. But if you're going to practice them just in these very basic ways, at least put them in some sort of context. You know, that's a different articulation. So, like the musical, it's G. One, two, Thank you. 
So you all know kind of how this goes. We will, or I will ask um, Bernard just a couple of questions for a second, and oh, then sure. we'll get. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. The pollen up here is really horrible. It's really really bad. Um, yeah. So Bernard then asked. How do you keep from getting lightheaded when you're playing in very extreme registers? So this was right after we played all the lovely, beautiful high notes this morning. But you know, in the free, sound free, chamber, free. Yeah. yeah. How do I keep from getting lightheaded? Um, you know, I I don't know if you get lightheaded. I um, I have not had that particular experience playing in the high range. Um, I've got lightheaded from doing breathing exercises. I mean, if it's lightheadedness, usually it has something to do with the super oxygenation of the blood. That's what I understand about the science of it. Like if you're doing breathing exercises and you're, you're doing it for five minutes, what you're doing is you're adding all this extra oxygen to the blood that's not used to, it can cause a lightheadedness. So one of the ways to counteract that in the, with the breathing exercise is to use a breathing bag. Because when you breathe into it, you're putting extra carbon dioxide. So that helps balance it. In terms of just high, high range playing, maybe it's the case, and I don't know you, and I, I obviously can't diagnose what's going on at all um, based on just the simple question. Um, it's a good question. I would just explore to see if you're breathing too emphatically, if that's happening. I'm not, you know, also there's back pressure when you play high. So for some people, um, that could cause, you know, sort of a change in internal pressure, I suppose. Yeah, that, Maybe you know that's better. how that's how I took that question personally. And I have not figured out how to not have this kind of back pressure, like dizziness kind of thing or kind of blood rush um, to my head uh, after I've been playing high notes for a little while. I've not oh. figured that out. So well, one of the things I, in relation to that head. that's helped me is I like to just, you know, we have to move the air faster in the high range. It's just a, a natural thing we do. But we had to figure out like what's the minimal speed we need because if you're moving it too fast and i've done this that can create a lot of excessive pressure so one thing i would say is as you're playing in the high range explore slowing the air down like it seems strange it's like you shouldn't do it but just think slower and find like the slowest air speed you can to make those notes speak 
because it's very easy to add the effort and that will immediately create back pressure. So that's, again, I don't know what's actually happening, but maybe you kind of consider some of those things that we just said. Sure. Yeah. Um, that's what's helped me. So. And I hope that helps. Um, if you have more questions on this, you can email me at Elizabeth at Marinecamp.org and I can direct your anything else further to the appropriate people like Bernard. So James, you comfy? Ready? Okay, we'll switch over to James Hi, now. Everybody. Thanks so much. Wow, good, good morning. <laughs> and that pollen is still getting to Bernard. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to try to be adjusting. So I'm going to do some playing and talking this morning. I'm going to be fiddling with the mic level. So if at any point um, I'm blasting your ears with my sound or you can't hear me, just, <laughs> just let us know and I'll adjust on the fly. But uh, it's great to see all of you. This is the last session. And I think I was put to the last session because everyone knows that I drink like three to four cups of coffee in the morning. So mm -hmm. I would be awake for the session. Yep. But it's great to see all of you. I think many of you from what I've seen on the sessions have been here. And yes, I see those coffee mugs. Excellent. I hope you have a good brew going this morning. Um, <laughs> we're all there. Yes, we're all there together bright and early. But thank you for joining us. It really means a lot to see all of you here. And those watching the stream later also, you're still part of the family here. So hopefully you can uh, join with us this morning. And uh, you're welcome to just listen along. You're welcome to play along if you have your horn. If you're watching the stream, of course, you can pause this video Go get your coffee, get your horn, come back, unpause, and then continue from there. So uh, the main topic of my session this morning is about scales and creative ways to go about scales. So kind of where we left off with Bernard's warm up is very scalar based. And that's great because there's a lot of foundation in scales. There's a lot of technical necess necessity for scales in terms of how we practice music and how we apply it. But for the most part, I've always kind of I don't know, anytime I see scales, I just kind of go, oh no, you know, something, something's going to happen. So let me just, I'm going to screen share for the most of the time here, so you can just have a visual aid to go along with, so some notes and things to look at. Much better, uh, this beautiful background, but otherwise, it's better if I'm just kind of up in the corner, away from everything else. <laughs> so we're just going to move over to this, and if at any point you have questions, go ahead and please ask. Uh, also, just so you know, you don't forget them. Don't feel like you're interrupting at all. I'm happy to enter, ask questions unless we just save questions to the end. No, do it however you want. Okay, to. we can we can do whatever we want. So anyway, so I'm calling this mastery scales through fun, creativity, and empowerment. The fun comes through well, all, hopefully all of this stuff. The fun comes through the creativity, and the empowerment comes from the the creative aspect of that you're actually making the choices. You're not just reading someone else's notes, but you're taking ownership in your learning of these scales and through that a deeper understanding of it and just some ways to mix it up. So this is kind of an overview of what we're going to talk about today. So creative ways to play scales and practice scales, changing the pacing, changing the order, changing the scope, adding a drone, using modes, talking about proto scales, um, maybe more advanced scales, transforming proto scales into blues scales, putting them into simple tunes, Improvising, which is kind of, we'll do improvise all throughout this, but simple songs. And then there's uh, a list of like a thousand different ways that you can also further practice scales. So I also included a quote here by Bud Herseth, which is former principal trumpet of the Chicago Symphony, that I like. So it says, never practice, but always perform. And in terms of scales, the reason why I included that quote is, as Bernard said, it's so helpful that when you're doing this, we're not doing it without mindfulness. We're not doing it just mechanically, but we're doing it musically. We should always try to play it musically because we practice like we perform and we perform, at least we try to perform musically. So I encourage you, and a lot of these little exercises will be musically based. So that's kind of my my hope and my intent with this. So when I, when I was practicing scales and when I tell my students to practice scales, this is usually the typical response. It's just innate, I think, in our thought process of, no, I don't wanna practice my scales. And it's because they're generic. Now, <laughs> you're looking at the second thing and you're thinking, wait, I just did that. So <laughs> is he telling me to not do what the master Bernard Scully just said? And no, that is not the case. 
the scales are not exclusively this pattern, right? And for those that have um, either gone through a majority of the kind of high school sequence or teach high school students, you will recognize this often as the all state scale pattern with articulations, this A-frame with arpeggios, and that's fine and that's great, and we have to do it, but it's boring, or at least I think it's boring. And it's one way of learning things. Um, one analogy that I like to make with scales is that when we're learning a scale, if all we do is we learn it in this way, it's like memorizing a sentence in a foreign language. So we can learn how to say, donde esta la biblioteca, and we can then, therefore, when we travel, find a library. But then if someone comes up and continues a conversation, we're not going to be very prepared because we don't know how to then find other words and combine those words into sentences. And music and scales is the same way. You can practice this and get really, really good at doing this. But then when you actually apply it to music that doesn't just follow this structure, it's not going to be as easy as if you practice your scales in many different ways and different different styles. So that's my goal here is just to give you a lot of different exercises and ways about trying things that are hopefully more fun and more interesting. And again, through that, we kind of deepen our understanding of the scale of the process and uh, retrain our brain how to work a little bit. So, all right. So the first thing here is the rainbow scale. And this is something that, well, a lot of this I steal from my teachers. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Agrell, who is a, a a K, uh, horn camp staple for many years. Uh, he is uh, the master of creative thinking, one of the great masters. And um, one of the early, early exercises that we did was a, what he called the rainbow scale, which uh, a lot of these exercises too, I should have included like a bibliography or work cited as uh, improvisation games for classical musicians. Excellent, excellent book. Anyway, the whole point here is that we're gonna play a scale in the traditional format, this kind of A-frame up and down but well, we're gonna make it as beautiful as possible. <laughs> and the choices we can make here are essentially the pacing of it. We can repeat notes, we can add dynamics, we can change articulations. But in this case, we're not gonna go backwards, we're still gonna go up and down, okay? So just to demonstrate what that sounds like, I'm just gonna take a C major scale. Um, I haven't really warmed up today, so I was, I should have followed along with Bernard's warm up, but then you would have heard me just in the background. You know, doing that and that wouldn't have been so great. So instead, let me just show you what I mean by a rainbow scale and um, then we'll do another one and you can try along as well. We always try to play with a good tone, with a good sound, but just taking time and, you know, leaning into the notes that we find most interesting of the scale. You know, some of the notes are more consonant, some are more dissonant. You can get into the theory of it, or you can just kind of go by feel of what you think sounds cool. And if we really think about it, that is the foundation of phrasing. What's the most interesting note from here to here? Let's go to it and let's come back from it. So we can phrase scales and it's really quite an easy thing. And you can choose exactly how you want to do that. So let's do this um, with another scale, just for practice. And this time, if you want to go backwards a little bit and not just forward, do it. I mean, really, you can make any choices that you want as long as we start, we hit this apex, and then we come down to the bottom. Uh, I'm going to do D minor because I think it's a lovely sound, and you can choose whatever one you'd like.
I wish I could hear you. I'm sure it's beautiful over on the other side of things. Um, and hopefully the sounds are coming across here decently as well. So rainbow scale, again, and you can change, you can add all kinds of other things, but mainly just pacing, articulation, dynamics, um, and focusing on the beauty of your sound. All right, so then the other thing, and this is just a, let's say a bunch of different things. They're not all necessarily related or sequential in nature, but uh, changing the order in which we practice our scales. So say we're just doing them normally. We have to practice all of our major scales because, I don't know, we have a college audition coming up or community band requires that we know, you know, five scales or all of our scales or, or something like that. Or you're just doing it because you want to get better at knowing our scales. Uh, we can practice it in different ways, in different orders, just to mix things up. And again, the goal is so that we don't go on autopilot, but we actually are thinking about all the different notes and, and how they relate to each other. And it's a deeper understanding of the scale. So a uh, circle of fits, chromatic, and then uh, we have this method that we do at University of Georgia for our barrier exams, our gateway exams. And that is, um, chromatically ascending, but through major, harmonic, minor, melodic, minor, or sorry, major, natural, minor, harmonic, minor, melodic, minor. So it would be like C major, D flat, natural, minor, D harmonic, minor, E flat, melodic, minor, E major, F, etc. like that. So you can kind of mix and choose. You can also randomize it um, if you happen to Play Dungeons and Dragons, and you have a D4 and a D8, you can roll one for the major or minor scale type, or one for the starting pitch, uh, one through eight. Or you can even do one through 12. Um, you can totally, or any kind of random number generator, I suppose. But uh, as far as the circle of fifths, circle of fourths goes, where this is just the order at which we add and subtract uh, sharps and flats. And so, one way that's great about doing this too is not even necessarily worrying about the whole scale, but just practicing the first bit of it. So I'm going to go back. So we have uh, changing the scope, and we're going to combine these things. Core scales, first three notes. Power scale, first five notes. And this is great too if you are learning scales or you're working with students who are uh, maybe, you know, don't have quite as large of a range, range as you do, but um, you want them to learn more scales and practice more things. We can accomplish, we can play through all the scale types with just the first three notes. Uh, let's just say major, for instance, without worrying about the range concerns of playing two octaves or more. So for instance, let's just take those first three notes and let's just practice uh, a couple of these, these two ways of doing it. So we'll go back here. And I actually like going ascending fourths. So we would start at C major at the top and we'll go counterclockwise through the flats first and then back through the sharps. Uh, but you can do whatever way you want. Uh, so for instance, if we're taking the first three notes and we're gonna start with C, we're just gonna go do, re, mi, re, do on those pitch, um, on those key areas, break, go to the next one and then go through. And so let's do that together. We'll take a lift between each one and then we'll go on from there. Now, the great thing is, is we did that. Um, now, if we wanted to do all of our minor scales, that seems like a daunting task, right? But if we are still within that scope of our first three notes, then the only difference is just one note, right? It's that third scale degree. So we're gonna just flat that third scale degree. 
So let's do the same thing, but let's just do it with minor. We could also, if we really wanted to, there's two other uh, modes, there's two other variants of those first three notes that exist, right? And one is the Phrygian one, so one, flat, two, three. And then uh, the Phrygian dominant, which is one, flat, two, normal, three. And so you could play through that whole sequence and play through all of the Phrygian modes in all keys, um, you could probably do that right now, really, because I think it's accessible when we break it down into smaller chunks. Uh, and it's fun. So that's the kind of circle. You could go the other way, of course. But um, if you think about it, key signature for horn is only difficult because we haven't practiced it. Mechanically, difficulty in horn is range-based. It's not the difference between this and this is, is really not that much, but it's just our familiarity and our comfort level. Again, it's this language thing, right? We're comfortable um, speaking the way we are because we practice this language. We know word construction versus learning a minor language or a, a foreign language, which it's all new. This is all new to us. We start in smaller chunks, words, small sentences before paragraphs or novels. Um, scales are the same way. So you start small and you build up. And this will also be the case with improvisation in the near future. Um, as far as the other way, chromatic, that would just be going up or down chromatically steps. And that's totally up to you how you want to do that. And then the, um, the barrier exam method that I mentioned before is just an extra level of difficulty. But you know, that's why we do it, just for fun. Okay, so we talked about those first three. The next is adding a drone. And this is great because we have continuity, um, both with a, sen a sense of where our pitch is, but also this is good for additional intonation. And this is something you can do with a friend. So if you have a friend, you can play a duet where you're going to play your scale, or in this case, we're going to take a step further, you're going to improvise on that scale along with the drone, and then you can switch. Or if you don't have a friend, uh, which is like me in front of this computer right now, just by myself, which is very sad, isn't it? Elizabeth is here. I'm right here. This, she's here, but she doesn't have her horn, and I don't want to bother her. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, you can find a recording of a drone, and you can find videos on YouTube. There's also a great one that I like to use, which is the Total Energy Tuner. Uh, and it's this it's the great thing that, that gives you a frowny face when you play out a tune. It makes you feel really bad about your life choices. But anyway, you can also do a drone on it, which is fantastic. And um, again, the purposes I think are pretty straightforward, right? Intonation, no stability, and just something fun to build up. So in this case, let's do, for the sake of example, let's just do C major again, because we're gonna add an, an element of improvisation to this. So I'm gonna put a sustained, I don't know how well this will come across, I'm going to double the octave and then add a fifth. And you can adjust. Let's see, I'll turn that down. You can adjust on this app whether it's equal or just temperament. Uh, equal temperament being like a piano is tuned where everything is just out of tune enough to be in tune. And just intonation, J U S T, which is intonation based on physics, where that's where we get that everything really locked in. We're talking about like sense, like fifth being slightly higher, major third being lower, 
you know, when, when you're an ensemble and they always say thirds lower, that, that's just intonation. So you can adjust it to however you'd like. And then you can just play your scale. to adjust the volume on the fly so I don't destroy things. Uh, <laughs> it's a little soft. I know when you're playing with a drone, I actually like playing it as loud as you can. Uh, wake your neighbors up with the drone. You know, might as well. It's very calming, but you want to be enveloped in the sound because part of this, as far as when you're working on intonation, is, you know, we don't want to play by sight, right? We want to play by ear in terms of adjusting intonation. So knowing what it feels like and sounds like when we're in tune, and when we're not in tune. And so doing, taking this rainbow scale concept and playing it over this drone and locking in especially to root and to five, to the third, and then to even the quote unquote dissonant notes, the second, the fourth, sixth, seventh, those all still have to be in tune. And it's fun to kind of just wiggle around and see what it feels like, see how uncomfortable those notes are when we're not in tune and then adjust it to when we're in tune and it just feels it just feels like a warm hug when we're playing in tune. It just feels great. So we can do that. As far as improvisation, this is my task for you. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a simple little song um, in C major, horn pitch C major, concert F, with this drone. And your level of range will be determined by your comfort level of scale. So you could play a rhythm just on C and just make something up. You could use the first three notes and just do a little improvisation in there. You could expand to five, expand to the whole range. I'll kind of demonstrate all of those in sequence as I go along. And again, this is, so you can cater this to your own comfort level, to a student's comfort level, um, really anyone, which is the great part about it. And you have this additional layer of both sonic, it's like a safety net underneath, but also for intonation, it's just really good. Um, I, tend to use, I use the word like killing birds with a stone, but that's just mean. So we're accomplishing many tasks with one task, okay? <laughs> it's, that's a little clunky. It doesn't really roll off the tongue well. We'll work on that. We'll workshop it, it's fine, yeah. We're avoiding many clams with one etude. I don't know, we'll, we'll workshop it in post. <laughs> So something like that. And I mean, you could just go on and on. I could put a drone on and sometimes that's part of my warm up is just putting on a drone, just doing long tones with that, doing scalar things, making up tunes. And the difference is, again, remember how we were talking about before, the difference between learning this, great, cool. Or being able to, this in this case, have, create our new sentence. Right? We take the components of that sentence, the words or the notes, and we rearrange them into a new sentence. 
we're not just spinning backwards in the library. We're saying, it's a lovely day outside. Uh, I feel good. I love porn. I didn't have enough coffee, but that's okay. We're working on it. And scene. So, you know, stuff like that. So drones are great. And like I said, when you have a friend or you have a large group, you can have everyone play the drone. We were doing a lot of exercises here this week with some of the participant groups where everyone would uh, play a drone, work on their pedal register, and we take turns doing the melody part. And it's really cool. And you can create some great little tunes. You can have two people playing at the same time. You can have kind of not scale competitions, but scale conversations, I suppose. And uh, again, we're actually, I don't know, maybe this is dangerous or taboo, but we're actually making music out of scales, which is kind of, well, that's the whole point, right? So excellent. Okay, so now we're back to the other element of practicing scales, which this is kind of taking a step back um, or adjacent, I suppose, to necessarily, I need to practice my C major scale. What are creative ways to do it? Well, these are just practicing scalar patterns or scalar concepts, but doing it differently. And that's with modes. I'm a big modal junkie, right? Those that have been to my sessions before, there's always usually a component about modes in it. And so the modes, we have major and minor scales, which are great, right? It's a, we have those nice relationships and we know them, we love them, but it's really just two flavors. It's the chocolate and vanilla, but we have others. We have mint chocolate chip, especially if it's like really neon green. We have uh, cookie dough. We have, Elizabeth, what's your favorite ice cream? Uh, just chocolate, I guess. Just chocolate, but like, what about some toppings? Oh, okay. Let's do like chocolate chips. Chocolate and chips. Oreos. Oreos. And chocolate sprinkles. And chocolate sprinkles. Modes are those chocolate sprinkles, Oreos, and chocolate chips, right? It's the spice, it's the additional flavor. So we have ways of practicing these scales by changing elements. Now, all of the modes are found, at least these, what we're calling these church modes, on the piano. It's just different ways of one white key to the other through that sequence. It's basically, it's rearranging the sequence of major and um, minor seconds of whole and half steps. And I thought we'd just play through them because they're fun. And these are ways that, when, once you play these, going back to the major and minor scales are pretty, I would say, easier because um, orally they're more familiar and it's just also just mix things up. Practicing the same scale over and over again is just boring. So here's a bunch of them. Hopefully it's not too small to see. Um, I'll talk through them and then we'll just play them through one by one, or actually we'll play them through all together. So Ionian is the fancy word for the major scale. Uh, it just is the major scale with the bow tie, I suppose. Uh, Dorian, and the way to think about this, and the way they're ordered, right? So if you take C to C on all the white keys of the piano, that's Ionian. We're going to shift up. D to D on all the white keys is Dorian. E to E is Phrygian. We get through all of those Locrian, and then after Locrian, we go back to Ionian. And then there's three additional ones that are just kind of combinations of a few things. So they're just kind of extra special. But so Dorian is flat three and flat seven, or you can think of it as a minor scale with uh, a raised six. This is the, what child is this? The green sleeves mode. Um, Phrygian is a natural minor scale, but with a flat two. So I guess that really cool, my favorite solfege syllable, which is ra instead of do, re, mi, do, ra, beautiful. Uh, Lydian scales, major scale with a sharp four, it's more major than major. A lot of my music uses Lydian mode because I just like the energy of it. Mixed Lydian is major scale flat seven. So this is where we get our dominant seven chord. Aeolian is the fancy word for minor. And I always think of aioli, which is like that mayonnaise you put on a really good burger or something. Always makes me hungry. Uh, Locrian is gross. It's everything is flat except for the fourth scale degree. Uh, which is not as bad as super low grand. You can see at the back, which is everything is flat except for tonic. Um, Lydian dominant, sharp four, flat seven, combination of those two. And Phrygian dominant is one, you'll, you'll get a kind of ethnic vibe to it because there's a lot of, this is used in a lot of Middle Eastern um, musics and found in other cultures. And it's um, major, well, I guess it's uh, Phrygian, but with a raised three. As do, ra, me, ra, do, is that kind of augmented second. 
So anyway, um, let's play through these just for fun. You can do it at whatever pace you want, um, or you can play with me. I'll just play kind of straight corner notes. But even through this, I'm going to try to make it as beautiful as I can. Okay? We'll start with, and we'll just kind of go down the list here. So this is a uh, major scale. the interesting note? What's the weird note? So Phrygian is that second note, that's the unique one, so I'll emphasize that. This next one, Lydian, is that fourth scale degree, so I may emphasize that, etc, etc. Here's Lydian. practical purpose for Super Locrian, you can send all of your um, editorials and hate mails directly to me. Don't do it to KPHC. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Beautiful playing, I assume. I can't hear you, but it looked beautiful from where I'm sitting. <laughs> all right. So we talked about modes. And again, as we talk about all these other elements, you're probably already thinking like, oh, well, I could combine modes with a drone. Yes, you're right. I could do the first five, just five notes of the, of the modal scale. Yes, absolutely. We're all playing this within a rainbow scale context, meaning as beautifully as possible. So all of these things are related. Um, and we, you know, we're not just limited to the C key area. Um, we're just using it for sake of example because there's no sharps or flats. We can kind of see the, um, the accidental relationships a little bit easier. Okay, <clears throat> so pentatonic scales are another way of interesting things, a way of doing things, which uh, I, you've been doing in your warm-ups, and we all know and love. And uh, then pentatonic scales are the gateway into blues scale, which is super fun. Uh, and synthetic scales, all that really means is just scale collections of notes that don't have any other kind of name, um, kind of like tone sets or something like that. But pentatonic scales 
are, are kind of protoscales, they're our building blocks. And so uh, the major pentatonic, one, two, three, five, six, do, re, mi, so, la, so, mi, re, do, is nice and beautiful. And there's a lot of music that's based off of that. Uh, we're going to look at the minor pentatonic this morning because that is the building block of the blues scale or one permutation of the blues scale. So in this case, minor pentatonic, one flat, three, four, five, seven, flat seven, that is. And back down. Let's play that together. And just to kind of get us in the mood of where we're going, let's do a little swan version of it. And that's, well, the augmented fourth, well, relation to tonic, but it's that sharp four, that flat five, that's going to bridge the gap between the fourth and fifth scale degree. And that's where we really get a lot of bluesiness. And that's, uh, well, hopefully not sadness. I mean, people play the blues to get out of the blues. So hopefully that's our goal too. Okay, let's play the blues scale together. scales in scale degrees is because that's I think once we kind of get the sense of where the scale degrees and the alterations are then we can put that over any other scale type without necessarily going well what notes what pitch is that that's for us to figure out based upon whether it's a regular three a flat three a regular seven flat seven etc like that so you can choose your favorite key area and just go wild and here's some Examples of, for instance, minor pentatonic scale in the circle of fourths, like we're talking about, and then the blues scale in the circle. And we're not going to play through these this morning, but just as a visual representation that you can see of ways that we can apply and combine the things we've talked about so far um, using different scale types. Okay, so we talked about all of these things so far. The next is applying modes or scales which, I mean, major is a mode, right? <laughs> to simple tunes. So, those that have um, been to my sessions before may recognize this. It's some simple songs. I don't know if they're in public domain or not, so the names may look vaguely familiar to songs that you know, but for legal purposes, these are not those. So, the top Mary Had Lambs is, may sound familiar to you, Anyway, <laughs> the goal here is just getting these little tunes. And, and for instance, Mary had lambs, right? If you think of it in C major, uh, think about the notes we're using and what those scale degrees are, right? So we're say, we're say C major, so I think that C is one, D is two, E is three, F is four, G is five. And this song only deals with those first five notes. So again, there is that, um, that power scale, right? Those first five notes. So we, we played all those power scales before. We can play Mary Head Lambs in, in all of the scale types. We can play Mary Head Lambs through the circle of fourths. We can play it through all the different modes as long as we know how to adjust those things. So for instance, let's play this once as written, this top line. And the other ones are just to give you um, examples of things. Your old sport, let's go to the sports ball. Uh, all of the greatest hits. So number one, let's play it through in C major, and then we're going to pick another modal and scalar type and play it through there. So first C major. I 
nice and beautiful. And people hear this and they think it's an easy tune, but what we're going to do with it, it makes it not quite as easy. So, um, so we're going to take this. We have a sense, and the more you play it, the more you'll get a sense of the intervallic relationships. And again, thinking of scale degrees, one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to do this in the context of F. So transposing it up, right? So we're going to start, it starts in the third scale degree. So thinking F, F, G, A, okay, A. So we're dealing with the first five notes, F, G, A, B, in some variation, C, okay? So we're going to start on that A, and we'll live between F and C, but we're going to modalize it also. So we're going to do it, um, let's do it in Phrygian dominant. So really the only variation we need to make with that, and you can go back uh, and you can look up these modes too, is that every second scale degree we're going to flat. So in the case of this, if we were doing it C, it would be every D is a D flat. In the case of our F, it's every G is a G flat. So we have F, G flat, A natural, B flat, and C. Those are our, four, our five notes. You can even write those out along with one, two, three, four, five, um, just so you can follow along with any two and writing out the scale degrees. So we'll try that um, and give it your best shot. simple songs in a mode that sounds weird you can always change the names so I don't know Mary had lambs Mary's lambs are haunting her Mary lost her lambs Mary lost her lambs that sounds like Mary lost her mind Mary lost her lambs mm, we're getting too deep it's too early <laughs> you can make up your own title but the concept you can apply it to basically any of these songs simple songs we're putting these scales in a musical context Right, that's the main emphasis here. And we're thinking about scales in terms of scale degrees, not just in terms of what note do I push when with what fingering, because that allows us to apply all these scales to actual music. Okay, now we did sim improvise simple songs when we talk about working with a drum, and that's great. That is my favorite thing to do with this. It's just to play in the space. Think of your practicing as a sandbox where you're figuring out how the form works. You're figuring out how it works for you and you're just having fun. You're noodling, right? That is, I think, the deepest understanding. And going back to the title of this presentation with empowerment, that's what I mean is that you're no longer just having to be playing someone else's frame. You're choosing what notes you want to play, when you play them and how you play them. And you're making music, spontaneous music. Right, it's, uh, improvisation is just spontaneous, unwritten composition. Um, it's, but it, the reason why there's a lot of trepidation initially with improvisation is because we're not as comfortable in whatever language we speak. We wake up and we, we improvise speaking because we're comfortable, comfortable with our language. But in music, the more we practice these simple building blocks, the more we get comfortable with that language, not just in memorizing the sentence, Right? But memorizing the words and how they interact. The grammar of a sentence is the phrasing of a musical phrase. So, uh, and then I included this, which is impossible to read, and that's kind of on purpose as a joke. Anyway, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a 51 different ways that you can practice scales. And um, if you want this, I suppose you can just mail me. But um, or actually just freeze frame the image, the, the video, and then copy it. And uh, anyway, we, we talked about a lot of these already, but suffice to say, there are a lot of ways that you can vary your practice on scales. And, uh, and that's really it. So the more creative you can be, the more I think you'll hold your own attention. And then when you go to do, I mean, if you were improvising a song in Phrygian dominant, Sorry if that was a little loud, I didn't turn it down. Um, then you just go to play a C major scale. Like, oh, that, that was a lot easier because we're building our way up, we're expanding, and then um, 
going back to those core fundamentals. So, so that's it. That's great. Um, if you all have any questions for James, please feel free to go ahead and drop those in the chat and we will get to them, but awesome. James, really. Yeah, well, thanks for joining me. have you here. Oh, it's good to be here. Yeah, it's, this camp is a magical place. I was here as a high schooler back in 2004 and um, it was transformative then and it's, it's still right now. So if you've been thinking about coming, uh, do that <laughs> because it's, it's awesome. It's, I don't wanna leave, it's day six and I'm exhausted and it's the best kind of tired. It's the kind of tired that leaves you inspired that rhymed. Mm. That was nice. I should put that on a t-shirt. You should, yeah. Anyway, thank you all for joining me this morning. Yeah. All right. Hello. So thank you all again so much for being here for the last couple of weeks with us. It's been a real pleasure to get to hang out with each of you every morning. And then for everyone who's online with us, we're so glad and so grateful that you've watched our videos as well. Um, we are starting to plan the next season. So I guess you could say of Horn Camp Connect. So we should have some coming uh, more in the fall, a couple in the fall, maybe then a couple in the spring. Uh, we'll keep you updated about that. But I haven't quite solidified plans enough to fully announce anything yet. Um, <clears throat> if you'd like to rewatch today's session or any of our other sessions from the last couple of weeks, you can find it on our YouTube page. And I'll be sending out another email tonight that has links to James's session that we're recording right now, as well as Susan McCullough's session from yesterday, uh, and you know all the other links that I send you. If you'd like to participate in our uh, t-shirt fundraiser that I've spoken about the last week or so, uh, I know many of you have already, which thank you so much. I, I hope that you enjoy your shirts. I need to go buy mine personally, but if you'd like to participate in that, it will also be in that email later tonight. Uh, and I think we have until July 3rd to order shirts. So if you'd like to do that, just uh, go ahead there. Uh, and then also, um, if you'd, if you'd like to donate to us through our PayPal Giving Fund page, you're welcome to do that as well. It's for Cormont Music, which core, C-O-R-M-O-N-T music. No pressure at all. Just if you'd like to do that, this, that would that's uh, always appreciated. Thank you again so much from all of us here for joining us, and we will see you soon. Keep in touch. Thanks.